Assassin's Creed Valhalla Dawn of Ragnarok. It's the third major expansion to Ubisoft's most successful Assassin's Creed game, but what do we actually know about the DLC? And bigger question, does that even matter at this point in development? Hey there friends, it's Kodiak here, and today we're unpacking it all in a brand new Assassin's Creed Valhalla video. So by now you're probably aware there is a huge new Assassin's Creed Valhalla DLC coming out on March 10th, 2022. Dawn of Ragnarok is a brand new standalone DLC that's got a pretty hefty price tag, $40. But with that price comes a rather large chunk of new content, the largest introduced into Valhalla by far. According to multiple sources that took part in a Ubisoft preview event, the Dawn of Ragnarok content is said to be around 40 to 50 hours long. Now take that with a grain of salt, we all know that the numbers there are taking into account all of the open world stuff players can do in the game, whether it be collecting flying papers or tracking down loot. It's not a bad thing, there are plenty of people that enjoy that aspect of the game, but there's also a healthy chunk of folks, myself included, who are just done with that aspect of Valhalla. That being said, if you're someone that likes the main story aspect of Assassin's Creed, well I think this is so wildly different that it's going to bring a ton of new attention to the game, and possibly entice players enough to reinstall and jump back into Valhalla. Now before we get into my own opinions on this, I do want to talk about some of the things we do know about the game. First up is the team behind Dawn of Ragnarok, Ubisoft Sophia. These are the developers that put together Assassin's Creed Rogue and the Curse of the Pharaohs DLC for Assassin's Creed Origins. In terms of story, well as you know we're going back to play as the Allfather, also called Javi, also known as Odin. The focus of Dawn of Ragnarok is entirely on Odin, and is set after the events of the Asgard and Jotunheim arcs found in the main campaign. Players will be entering the dwarf realm of Svartalheim as they try and track down Baldur, Odin's son, who's being held captive by the fire giant Surtur. What's pretty neat is that Ubisoft is using the hostage situation to bring together multiple realms. The fire realm of Muspelheim and the icy realms of Jotunheim have both invaded Svartalheim, which means enemies of ice and fire will be an ever-present threat within the world. To be clear, I don't think this really changes anything at a foundational level. You'll still be maneuvering across an open world, patrolled by enemies, but this time around things are going to have a completely different aesthetic than we're used to in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. According to Mikhail Lozanov, the creative director at Ubisoft Sofia, Svartalheim is where all of the famous magic weapons and artifacts have come from, and this beautiful and surreal world is torn apart by war. My biggest complaint about all of the Asgard content within the base game was that there was no physical rewards for engaging with that story, so if we are in the land of magical items, I hope there will be a number of new armor sets and weapons players will be able to find. I think that's the case as a number of leaks have already confirmed such things, but as I've said in other videos, I'm pretty much done with the whole leak thing for this game, I just want to enjoy Assassin's Creed Valhalla, not ruin it for myself and for you all months in advance. One thing we do know for certain is that a new artifact called the, and I apologize for botching this, the Huger Rip, is going to allow Odin to draw new powers from defeated enemies. We actually saw a number of these in the trailer, including the ability to turn into a raven and drop down and assassinate enemies, imbue our weapon with ice and then use that power to shatter frozen foes, as well as reanimate enemies from the dead and have them fight alongside us. We also saw that awesome Shadow of Mordor looking bow shot, where Odin shoots and then teleports to the arrow's target. That one really won me over and will probably be one of my go-to powers. According to the website, it also looks like we'll be able to use some sort of illusion power to turn ourselves into a musebull and walk among the enemy, while also being immune to fire and magma. So on top of our standard melee and ranged mechanics, we'll have these new Huger Rip abilities that we can activate two at any one time. It also seems to have a pretty straightforward energy system where you restore the resource by draining the energy from defeated enemies. You can also find giant flowers called Huger Blooms, which restore that energy or sacrifice some of your health at a special shrine. It's a pretty cool new feature. More abilities means more options for players, and I am always in favor of giving the player more tools to take on the world however they see fit. The final chunk of new information has to do with a battle arena that will be coming to the game. According to the website, a new arena run by the Valkyrie will allow players to take part in combat trials with the option of boasting, increasing the arena's difficulty 
for added rewards. I mean, yeah, arenas are cool, and having the chance to see more enemies from the different Nine Realms I think fits nicely with the theme of this DLC. At the end of the day, it's most likely going to be a way to get some sort of mystical armor sets and weapons, and I'm all about that. Look, I think the bottom line is this. We're going back to the Nine Realms in some capacity and dedicating an entire expansion to that idea. And while it's definitely not a traditional Assassin's Creed game in the literal sense, it's something many players wanted to see more of in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. It really comes down to the aesthetic and the story. Do you want to engage with a more mystical fantasy arm of the game, or are you just happy sticking with the content based more in reality or just ignoring it completely? So that's all of the new stuff confirmed in the trailer or on the website, but I wanted to talk to you guys candidly about my actual thoughts on a massive new Nine Realms DLC. First off, I'm not a huge fan of that price tag. $40 is a lot for a game that's a few years old at that point and has already collected multiple hundreds of dollars from individual players. That being said, I realize that to develop games you need money, but that doesn't really stop me from being lukewarm on the entire idea. Second is this thing that's just eating at me in the back of my head. We all know that Valhalla is a pretty bloated game. I mean, check out any review of the base game, including our own, and that'll be clear. That being said, thinking about doing really mundane things in a world that's supposed to be at war really doesn't work for me. Part of the reason why I like the Isle of Sky update so much is because of how stripped down it was. Yes, there were a few things to collect and a couple side missions to complete, but ultimately I wasn't running around doing a million silly things. It was narrative driven, and I know, shocker, I actually think Ubisoft is pretty good at telling stories. When I hear that the game is 40 to 50 hours long, I know what that actually means. A 15 to 20 hour story that they double to include all of the optional content. Now, I don't mind optional content, I want to make that clear, but at this point in development, a year plus later, I just want more than that same old, same old. I'm not asking them to inject a million new systems into the game, but at least pull back on some of the things the community doesn't like, because that in itself is a huge win. I do think that with a wildly different setting, there is the opportunity to do something different and subvert expectations. It's a completely different studio creating this content, and while they need to work within the confines of the Valhalla base game, if they manage to change up some of the elements in new and interesting ways, that would be huge. We've got the new artifact abilities, which sound awesome, but they're still a means to an end. You've got this awesome new setting, a new dynamic in the world, and if I end up running across lava pillars, chasing papers, just to unlock a new tattoo, I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna be pretty bummed. Dawn of Ragnarok is taking Assassin's Creed Valhalla in a different direction. No one can deny that. But is it the right direction? Comment down below and let me know what you think about the newly revealed DLC. Will you be paying the high price for a mystical experience? Will other games like Elden Ring be taking up all your time come March? As always, friends, thank you so much for checking out this video. I know a year later and we're still talking about Assassin's Creed Valhalla. So if you appreciate our content, we would appreciate your support. Hit that thumbs up and consider subscribing for more videos covering some of the biggest games coming out. We also invite you to join us on Discord. We've got a great group of around 7,000 members with a special section dedicated to Assassin's Creed, so check out the link below to join today. Finally, if you like everything we're doing here at Legacy Gaming and you want to support us even more, you can do so by becoming a member. For just a couple bucks, you're helping evolve the channel and take our community to that next level. Check out the join button below to learn more. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching and play on.